oh, welcome you guys. Um, thank you so much for your agility and When Words Collide 2020 Digital Edition. Um, yes, thank you guys so much for attending. Okay, so welcome to 10 Things I Wish I'd Known. And yes, we've got Mark Leslie, Angela Ackerman, Susan Calder, and me, Sarah Cades Graham. And can I actually just get our panelists to introduce themselves for you? Angela, how about we start with you? Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Angela Ackerman, and um, you probably know me most from books like The Emotion Thesaurus and the rest of the Writers Helping Writing Descriptive Thesaurus Writing Guides. Thank yeah. you. Um, I, uh, yeah, I love teaching writing and love helping writers, and um, you might also know me from Writers Helping Writers, uh, which is my blog, or One Stop for Writers, which is my site for writers. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, and welcome. Susan, how about you? Okay, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Susan Calder. I jumped into writing about almost 30 years ago now, and I really Beautiful. didn't know anything hardly. And it was a long journey and not always easy, but I have published three novels now. Uh, one okay. is a, Two of them are murder mysteries, and one is more mainstream suspense. And about, I've also published about 10 short stories and articles awesome. and poems, so uh, you can get there. <laughs> Excellent. Good stuff. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Mark, welcome all the way from Ontario. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I've been a writer since uh, 1992, which is the, the year my very first short story got published. It's also the Yay. first year I started working in the book industry, and I've worn those sort of hats. Uh, Mark Leslie, mostly as the fiction writer guy who writes horror and scary stuff and true mm -hmm. ghost stories. And then Mark Lefebvre with the hat of the book industry guy who loves to help other writers. Uh, so those are the two hats that I'm bringing to this table. Sarah, awesome. we didn't find out about you, though. You didn't introduce yourself and oh, all the cool things you're all about. <laughs> nice try. Sorry. Thanks, guys. Um, yes, my name is Sarah Cades Graham. I write fiction under Sarah Cades, nonfiction under Sarah Graham. I love writing. It's just, it's a passion of mine. I just... Um, and it's cool because not only as you, I started writing in 2009. Um, that's when my first novella was published. And what I've loved about this medium is how much I've grown and how much you can unpack. And I don't think you can ever like truly like get there, right? Like it's an art form that is just always expanding. You're, you're always pushing your boundaries. Um, and there's just so much growth that you can do as, as an artist, which I absolutely love um, with writing, which has been my experience with writing. And lately it's cool. Like you find your writing voice and that's neat and you kind of hone it more. And then um, I actually realized that I really love using arts-based approaches. So like the fiction stuff that I do for, for me and the writing I do for me to kind of fill my bucket and, and my soul work um, actually applies to my day job and and yeah so that's kind of neat too like how not only you find your writing voice but also kind of the path to that creative passion and, and where it leads in not necessarily artistic like known artistic places which is super super exciting which i love so and one of the things i love i love bringing this panel together we've done it a couple i can't remember if it's a couple years ago or last year um that we did this because it's hard being a writer like you're you're putting yourself out there and, and you can feel really vulnerable um, when you share your work. Like you can be a writer without sharing your work, obviously, of course, but sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's just nice to, to get, um, I guess, some of other people's experiences and, and just that it's okay. Like your paths, you know, it might be windy and that's cool. Like that's just process. So don't, don't fight it. Just like flow with it. So I want to bring together this amazing group of um, people to talk about it and I'm cool with questions. So um, yeah, put them on the chat or we can take breaks. And um, if Brett lets us like unmute people, <laughs> we can totally do that, but let's just be organic and kind of roll with it. So can I first go with, um, Actually, let's do what assumptions, and Mark, I'm going to put you on the hot spot to, first, to start. When you started writing, what assumptions did you have that proved not true? So uh, you asked me first because I'm the oldest. Can I, I can go back the furthest when it comes to this. <laughs> and, 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 and I am going to reveal my age because I always thought that being a writer would be me and a typewriter, you know, this romantic dream, maybe a coffee, maybe a scotch, maybe that sort of thing, that it would just yeah. be sit butt in chair fingers on that old-fashioned keyboard and that would be what it was about 
what I didn't realize, uh, and, and that was, and I'm still learning <laughs> 30 years later, is that's just the first part. It is a, a critical part, absolutely mm -hmm. critical, because you can't do the other stuff unless you've done that. But yeah. it's not just about the writing. It's not just about that passion for story. It's about understanding the business of writing. And when I started, it was snail mail submissions and, you know, 13 rejections mm -hmm. for every acceptance. And as what you guys, if, if you're newer to the industry, you have no idea what an SASE is, self-addressed <laughs> envelope. Yeah. And being in Canada, having oh to get international reply coupons or IRCs and get, and, you know, it cost $1.10 mm -hmm. to get a 25 cent stamp to get your rejection back in the mail. So I... I'm grateful for that time because now when, when my Amazon, Amazon dashboard is, is delayed and I'm doing a promo, I, 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 people freak out because, oh, my God, 15 minutes and I haven't seen anything new. It's like, try waiting by the mailbox, bucko, for six months for your rejection to come in the mail. No, I'm, I'm just yeah. joking there, but I had this vision of what it was going to be to be a writer. Uh, I figured I'd be starving, but I figured it would be a romantic thing of me and a keyboard. Uh, I didn't realize it would be me in the mailbox and me in self-addressed stamped envelopes and me in online dashboards and, and me stuck in airports traveling all over the place. But um, yeah, that's one. That's that's an assumption that um, I learned that the long hard way. And actually, it's funny that you started with that one because you have really been on, if I dare say, the forefront of all the changing technologies and the, um, how the publishing industry has changed in the last decade. So that's actually pretty neat that that's what you started with because now you're my go-to guy for questions on the latest technology and, oh, my God, what's new and what, what's, what are the expectations in the publishing world these days now with technology? And it was just a typewriter and paper it way back then and, just, and the post office. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Um, Susan or Angela, do you have anything that you want to add um, or, or riff off of Mark's? Well, I can say that my fantasy was more that I had this – wonderful stories to tell, and the world was going to be equally fascinated with that story, and I was yep. going to write a, a novel in about a year, and a publisher would immediately pick it up, and it would hit the bestseller list. It might have taken a year and a half overall, but, yep. and well, I could say that none of that was true, <laughs> but maybe I love my idea, but don't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't assume the world is equally interested. I really didn't know how to write it. I had a lot to learn about just the craft of writing. Publishers are not necessarily snapping you up, and it's not that easy to do that. So that was a, yeah. a brutal wake-up call, I would say, for me. Yeah, I yeah that uh, yeah you sum that up pretty good. <laughs> no, but I feel like a lot of people in that have had that same fantasy. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how we see, you know, our favorite yeah. authors. That's that's their reality. We didn't see, you know, the years of work. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. their breakout, you know, oh, look at this debut author, but you didn't yeah. see that they've been working for on that manuscript, yeah, for 12 years yeah. <laughs> under their bed. How about you, Angela? We're only on question one, and I can see that this is going to be really cathartic. <laughs> <laughs> We're painful. Great. I totally agree with, like, all of this so far. I mean, I was, you know... I totally remember what it was like, Mark, to be, you know, submitting stuff by hand and, you know, sending away for U.S. postage and waiting and waiting and waiting and all of that stuff. Um, and I, I think one of my big, big assumptions beyond everything that you guys have talked about is that I thought writing, you know, would be the hard part like the hardest part, yeah. and then it would just get easy, right? Because like, okay, now I got my book, yay! I'll just <laughs> hand it over to the publisher and, you know, wow, I'm done! Yep. And, you know, like like Mark said, I mean, uh, you know, I think back to old, you know, green Angela, naive Angela, you know, just fresh and new and everything's all exciting. And, you know, I remember just, oh, you know, yeah, I've got to get this chapter ready for my critique group. And, you know, like, oh, this is so hard. And, you know, and it don't get me wrong, it was hard. But once you cross that line to published yeah. author, and then you see like, everything, all the new skills that you need to master. Um, wow, it's just, it kind of puts everything in perspective. So I, like Mark, I agree. I think being on the ground floor and doing things the old way sort of prepares you to be patient. Yeah. And um, just realize you can't do everything at once and you just have to manage the best you can and always, always, always be open to learning more because the industry is always changing. 
yeah have yeah to, you know you have to just let go of the fact that you're not gonna know everything and then you're good <laughs> okay I know enough I'm good it never it's mm -hmm. never like that so yeah. So if I could expand on that a bit, as you were, as actually all three of you guys were talking, it reminded me truly of being, um, honoring your process, whatever your process is and however long it takes, not to beat yourself up and like truly just sit with your process and let it take as long as it takes. Cause, cause that's how, that's how you reach the level and the maturity by putting in the time, right? Mm -hmm. Um, take the time to get your experience, whatever your experience looks like honor that part of it because that's part of the that's part of the I feel the beauty of of this art form is that the process is so you could say convoluted or winding you know like it really is um, a journey um, to be savored so yeah I would just add add that um, to what all three of you guys said so what about roadblocks are there any roadblocks that you guys didn't expect that you hit, but then it was actually a beautiful lesson? So a roadblock that actually was a stop, you need to learn something important or stop, this isn't the right direction to you. You need to go around this for something. Hmm. Sorry, you're that was like... You're in a positive mood, aren't you, Sarah? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll start. I, I guess... Criticism of my mm -hmm. uh, my writing. I, I when I first took it out to say critique groups and that, and people being critical in ways I, I didn't really expect. And I suppose on the positive, it forced me to look at it and improve it. And every and and even though criticism is really hard yeah. for I think everybody, and certainly for me, like I, I never say it never hurts. But yeah. if you can take it as a positive of a learning. Mm -hmm. And uh, that you do need to improve something, not necessarily do what everybody tells you to do, but at least that there's something to look at. You certainly can learn and improve your writing as opposed to if you just assume, well, I, I'm really good and I'll, I'm just going to publish my book and it's really good. Yeah. Uh, so I think criticism can be used in a, in a positive way that way. Yeah, I would agree. Angela or Mark, do you have anything to spin off it? Um, I think for me, uh, and this again might be familiar for you guys is I know that in my writing journey I hit a point where I had learned enough about writing craft to be fully aware of exactly how much I didn't know and to that <laughs> point in time like I was like you know I just need a little spit polish and I'll be good to go you know like this book's pretty, pretty close you know and yeah. I mean you go into the critique process and you realize uh no Angela you have a lot to learn but do you guys remember like specifically remember a point where you're you realize like you've learned enough where you're just starting and starting to soak in like oh my gosh like there's yeah. so much I don't know and I think for me like that was a uh, kind of a, a come to Jesus moment for Angela because I really had to think okay are you ready to put the time and the energy into this career yeah. because I know a lot of people that got to that point and they just decided you know what this is just it's too, it's more than I thought it was going to be and, and I think I'm out I'm going to turn to something else so for me that point like I very much remember it and and I decided no I I really want this and yeah you know what, I really like learning, so I'm okay with this. And then I kept going. But seeing that mountain ahead of exactly just how much you need to learn, whew, yeah. That was, could I jump in actually, Mark, before you jump in? Because this is really, like, it's a great segue, Angela. When my first, I fell into writing by accident, like a friend said I should try it. And, and my first manuscript, which took me two months to write, was accepted, which I know that's weird and it's an anomaly and it's not reality. Like it's not real. I understand that, but I needed that initial success and it got accepted. And then I realized, holy crap, I love this. But when I didn't sell a million copies right out of the bat, it was like, what? okay, I have so much to learn and this learning curve is steep. I didn't put another book out for was it eight years? I think it was eight years. I, I put a short story out in there, but it was eight years before I felt confident enough to be like, okay, I can jump in again. So I want, like, I hear you because you see that and you're like, oh my God, that mountain is like epic, but the view's got to be amazing. So yeah. it's, it's worth it. I'm going to put the time in. So, yeah. Okay, Mark, I, 
cut you off. So no, 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 not at all. Not at all. That's perfect. Uh, I wanted to riff on, on something that Angela said as well. And, and it's that I wake up every single day with that feeling of how much I do not know about the craft and business of writing. And I look at other writers and I, I mean, the, most of the books behind me on, on the bookshelf here are, you know, I had a subscription to Writer's Digest magazine oh, yeah. and the and Writer's Digest books. And I would be get like two or three books every month on the craft of writing on even manuscript format and all that stuff. And it feels like every morning when I wake up, there is that mountain ahead of me of all the things I still have to learn. And I look at other writers and I read such beautiful prose and and it seems like it's just so effortless for them to be mm -hmm. so perfect and beautiful. And that's the other thing that I think was an assumption we make is it doesn't come out that way. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work to get that. Um, and so that, um, I, I just had to riff off of that because that, that's really, really critical. Now a roadblock for me uh, apart from that, you know, huge confidence that I have in my own writing is uh, procrastination, and 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 it and it affects a lot of different writers in different ways. So we can we we say we're doing research into whatever it is we need to research really really well for our novel, and we spend six months doing research and never get back to the novel. I do research for nonfiction books as well, and mm -hmm. sometimes the research is a perfect excuse not to get the thing out because, as Susan says then when your stuff's out there, then there's criticism, right? But I can't be criticized if nobody sees it yet, right? So that it's yeah. like a safety thing that we protect ourselves with. Yeah. But procrastination is, is I'm just huge at it. Um, uh, it it's, it's, a, it's a massive thing that still gets in my way every time. Now, when I, when I have a publishing contract with a traditional publisher, it's almost easier because I'm beholden to someone else. and I can, um, I have to get it done because that's what a professional writer does is you, is you meet your deadline. Yeah. So what I try to do when I'm self-publishing or indie publishing is I try to set deadlines that will let someone down, like the editor that I've hired and is only available from this time to this time or mm -hmm. uh, putting a book up for pre-order and then Amazon will kneecap you if your book's not up in time. So I, I think there are ways to overcome those hurdles if you recognize your, where, where you need that guidance. I need a deadline. I write to deadline mm -hmm. and I'm motivated yeah. by deadline. And so that's a roadblock I continually face every single day. Trust me, for this conference, for the Aurora Awards tomorrow night, which, you know, 90% of the work still has to get done. But uh, that's just, that's just that's life. Just, that that's your process. That I'm going to embrace my process. I, some wise person <laughs> told me, to, to not fight with your pride. I forget where exactly. I heard that recently. Yeah. It was, it was I think wise. she's, I hope she's wise, a very sage woman. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, Mark, you, what you said really hit, um, when you said, like, when you read, like, pro, like, you take this book and you're reading it and it just flows so beautifully. It actually reminded me of Hollywood, right? Like the Photoshopped images, when we see, uh, an actor and like they're just flawless well it's because they've got an amazing team that makes them look flawless just like a book like we have amazing teams that we bring together to, to help our books look flawless right and read flawlessly so yeah that's actually cool i've never thought of that before that analogy but yeah we totally have our hollywood team rocking to make the books look fantastic look like great. angela your new book released thank you yes my right? dog is photobombing me right now <laughs> Sir, you're right in front of the screen. That's okay. I just wish it's you knew helped. before this before this presentation started. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So that yes, that's our cool. yeah, it, our latest book did come out, and it's uh, that was a you know its own challenges launching a book during COVID, and for us summer is never a good time to to launch a book because so many people are offline. But you know what, I Beck and I are at the point where you know when we're done a project. You know, like Mark said, procrastination can kill you. And so Becca and I, our magic is that we create business plans. And we have a business plan for our books and we have a business plan for One Stop for Writers. And I've got them, I've got them on my wall where I can always see them. I've got two, just like this. And it always keeps me on task of, you know, what is it that you need to be doing? When do you need to be doing it? Because I, procrastination can just swallow me alive. And so for us, it's like, okay, this book is done. Let's get it out and let's move on to the next thing. And I, we, we just have to do that in order to, to, to keep moving forward. Cause yeah, otherwise I will procrastinate over everything. Yeah. 
Let's actually talk about process a bit. So you like your lists and you have a schedule that you like that you follow. Mark needs deadlines, uh, like, so he hustles and that adrenaline just like rockets it out. Susan, what's your, like how scheduling wise, what do you work best with? Well, I think I like to set personal deadlines. If, if it's another, somebody else's deadline for me, then I feel pressure with that, but I'll set personal deadlines. So what I'll usually do is, let's say I know a holiday is coming up or I know I have to take a break from writing for some reason. I try to plan to be at a certain point in whatever I'm writing by that date. And I try to make it realistic. And actually, I probably err on the easier side for me, but I still don't make it too easy. Yeah. And so that uh, it, it kind of pushes me to, to get there. And I also find that, you know, when I do take a break, I get out of the zone in that. So I, I really like the momentum of it. So I would say, for me, that's the process in, in this way that works best for me. That's actually really cool because you need personal deadlines yeah. and external ones are more stressful, like destructive instead of constructive stress. And Mark is just the opposite. And Angela rocks schedule. So I really want to communicate actually to all of our attendees and viewers, like however you roll with this, like find what works for you and don't be afraid to test other, like that, you know, try Susan's way, try Mark's way, try Angela's way, try like, what's your don't, way? Don't is try Mark's way. It's too stressful. <laughs> well, actually, Mark, I I usually um I usually go with your way, and then um I started getting migraines, and so I thought maybe I should. I hear that so um, much whenever anyone follows me. So for me personally, but okay, you guys can totally laugh, and I'm gonna share something that's crazy. Um, I used to like fight with like internal like chastise myself for like how come you're not more methodical with your process how come you know you don't have a schedule and how come you can't plot a book like the plotters like why do you pants your stuff like blah 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 blah. all that in those internal critics that we we learn about other people and instead of being inspiring and like taking their knowledge and just picking out what works for us and what and how we can roll with our process and what we've learned and then leave the rest what doesn't work for us i was trying to like shove everything in and like no no i gotta learn how to do this and then um i i don't work that way i like deadlines and i like being like that the adrenaline hit sometimes and then other times i need more time and and get it done early and then that feels really great too so I found out that um, I did my astrology stuff. So you guys can laugh, giggle, whatever. But it totally helped, like, according to my numbers, that's just how I roll. Like, I am I just don't have a, a set process. It's different for everything. I'm like, oh, so my process is chaos. Okay, I can roll with that. <laughs> I need a t-shirt so, that says that, Sarah. My process, my process, is, process chaos. is chaos. I agree. I'm going to write that down. Maybe, maybe we can make something going on with that. We could do a bulk order because, yeah. That would I think so. A lot of things. I think so. So I just I want to share that with you guys because even if you uh, one process works for one type of writing and another process works for another one, what works for one book for me isn't actually working for this other book for me. And so at first I'm like, well, what's wrong with me? Like, God, why can't I get this? And instead I'm like, whoa, what if I just cut myself some slack and just like accept that this book is being written differently? And then like, God, that pressure just like dissolved so well, Sarah you raise a really really good point that I think is something I wish I knew earlier on as a writer is there is no one way to do anything there's no one yes. way to write any particular book I, I approach nonfiction books on ghost stories completely different than nonfiction books on the business of writing and publishing I approach short yeah. stories different than I approach uh, novel length works and 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 yeah. I'm going to approach something differently than Susan is than Angela is and and as you said, I'm, I may have a different process for, for different books and it's okay to adapt. It's okay to, it's okay to change and grow yeah. and, 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 and experiment too. Because I think in, in, when I first started, I remember getting those Reader's Digest books and, and reading an article about how to do something and then thinking mm -hmm. that that was the only way to do it. Yeah. Or now online seeing some superstar, uh, you know, uh, self-published uh, rock star making seven figures a year. And I go, well, I have to do exactly what Mark Dawson's doing. No, I don't. What I have to do is I have to learn from what all these different people are doing and then adapt to, for my audience, for my readers, for my processes, adapt it in a way that I can live with and be comfortable with because mm -hmm. you, we, we spend so much time worrying about the things we're not getting done or worrying yeah. about the, you know, the work we're not getting done or the, 
the sales we're not getting or the, uh, the social media we're not engaging in or whatever mm -hmm. it is without stopping and going right back to that advice Sarah said is respect your own process. Respect your process. <laughs> if I could be known as that writer that sometimes pops onto social media, I'm like, that's me. Instead of trying to be the be all end all of like social media queens that there's a million amazing people out. I'm like, how do they do that? Like, I can't keep up with that. Like, how do they do that? And then I just realized, well, I'm not that that's not me, right? Like, so don't try, Sarah. Like, don't try to be someone you're not. I'm just that, like, I'm just going to pop into social media when something rocks um, that I really feel like compelled to share with everyone. And that's not what any um, how to, you know, how to market your books. Like, that's not the advice they're going to give you. But guess what? Right now in my life, that is totally <laughs> what I need to accept. But I think, too, with marketing, I mean, you want to pick a couple things that you can do really well. You don't want to try to do it all because that's like a really great way to end up in a rubber room. It, it really is. But I yes. mean, you're right. Like you see other people and they're just, they're amazing at this. So they're amazing at that. And, and you just feel like I'm not doing that. Like I'm dropping the ball. Like I need to figure out how to do that. And then you just, you have to kind of slow your roll a little bit and cut yourself some slack. And, and it, you know, just, I think it's, it's funny because I've never really made the connection until right now that it's important, um, you know, in writing, when you're trying to figure out, you know, how to write and what's your process with, with writing, you know, it's okay to experiment. And it's, you shouldn't, like Mark said, feel like you have to do it one way. You have yeah. to plot a novel one way. You have to pants, you can't plot, or you have to, you know, plot and not pants. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's just, or you have to follow this structure method. You really have to experiment to figure out what works for you. And then what do you want to write? Like all of those things, it's all a journey to figure that out. And so why should it be any different with our business side of things and with our marketing side and figuring out what our strengths are and how can we play to those strengths and then recognizing areas where we need to develop and what, it, what are we willing to do that isn't going to drive us crazy trying to mm -hmm. do it all because you really just can't do it all. You can't. So. And actually that reminds me. So I, at one o'clock I, I watched James Kademan's presentation. Um, he wrote the bold business book and he gave an amazing presentation. And he talked about that. Like you need to have, if you don't love what you're writing, like why are you doing it? Right. Why are you doing it? Why mm -hmm. is that your goal? If you don't love it and how can we love something if, if we're giving ourselves these guidelines or I, I don't want to say guidelines because that's not the right word. These limitations are, are very strict things like this is how you do it. But if it doesn't, if you're not in your flow, like it's going to be painful and uncomfortable and we're going to procrastinate because it's not going to be fun. Mm -hmm. So what can you do to set yourself up for success? I feel is actually explore who you are, what your process is. And again, it might change on different projects or even different phases of a project or uh oh she froze yeah get yourself some slack oh. so yeah okay. so uh susan did you want to jump in um i'm trying to think where we were you froze briefly uh we uh, i did i yeah <laughs> sorry yes I, I think so i think it's it's the same as this talk here everybody maybe will take away something that resonates with them but you're not going to be able to do everything mark said and everything angela mm -hmm. said and everything i said and you said but, but something resonates with you, you take it away and make it part of your own. I think that, you know, that can be it. It's good. So I just want to take a pause. Um, we do have a few questions from the chat that I want to um, backtrack if that's cool. So from Talina, she asked Mark, do you ever feel that way about your own prose? Meaning I look at my past work and I say, I can't write that good. I can't even believe I wrote that. Do you have that? Yeah, so, yeah, it's it's it's, it's funny. I'm and I'm, I'm sure everyone encounters that. Uh, Talina, that is that's so true. I was <clears throat> I was just proofing the audiobook for a Canadian werewolf in New York because I have the second book in the series coming out, and I'm working on the the third. And as I was uh, proofreading, listening to the audio, and looking going through the text, I was actually you know it it was several years ago when I wrote it, and I was going, wow, that guy's pretty good. <laughs> I don't know how he came up with it because I couldn't write like that. Because I'm trying to, uh, again, I'm getting back. It's been a, a few years since I've worked on, on this character. So I need to get back into the universe, back into his shoes, back into his first person narrative. And I was feeling of my own writing like, oh, no, I hope I can, I hope I can achieve this. Because this guy was good, whatever he did. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that, I, think, I think that does happen to us. But, but, but 
Uh, you know the old saying that w you you can never step into the same river twice. You're not the same person. It's not the yeah. same river. The water's flowing, and you're different two seconds later with that second step. It's the same thing as a writer. You have grown as a person and as a mm -hmm. writer, and maybe even, and if this is the magic of writing, maybe your character has also grown. So it's, oh, for sure, you're a little bit older. Yeah, you know, like a high school reunion. You're like, well, you look like the person that I remember sitting beside in grade six <laughs> English, but. Uh, but we're both a little bit different now. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's part of it as well. I also, uh, that reminds me too, there will be times when when I write, it feels like almost channeling because it just flows and it's just so clear and it just, it, it just, it's like I'm in the zone, like the running zone that, you know, apparently runners get that I've tried and I've never hit while running. But I, I've gotten there in writing and so I actually got to a point where I'm like, oh, well, if I, you know, you try and if you're not in the zone, then, oh, it's not worth it. Oh, well, no, like, dude, like, put you put your butt in. Sometimes you go to the gym, not that often for me, not or like now. outside, <laughs> not now. But, you know, sometimes you just put the, just put the hours in and sometimes it's going to flow and sometimes it's not. And you can get just as creative and get just as much from the non-flow times when it's a struggle as you get from the flow times, right? In archaeology, we call that finding the site boundaries. A negative shovel test is still important because you're finding the, the site boundaries. If everything had a positive in the, there'd be no like def definition of the site. <laughs> so those negative shovel tests, those are important. So just like when uh, writing doesn't flow as much as we don't want it to be a struggle, sometimes it is and, and honor that because we learn also through struggle, unfortunately. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So we have another one. This one is for Angela and Kelly S. Do you feel like sharing your formula thingy on the wall? I swear I'm not yelling at you because she had it all in caps so that I'd notice and ask you the question. I Yeah, actually, I wrote a post about this and I share the template. If you um, if you go to Jane Friedman's blog and you or you just Google uh, the seven step business plan for writers, I do a whole do post on it. I will try and, to Google that right now. Actually, sure, can, yeah, seven step business plan. Sorry, I would, but like I'm. Uh, Tony just shared it. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. So, yeah, awesome. I, my <laughs> husband is a business management consultant, and there's some times where that's really handy, and this was one of them because Beck and I, I think this was like 2013 or 2014 when we started following a business plan, and oh my gosh, it just changed everything for us because it helped us really assess good opportunities from like, opportunities that you know like well is is that flowing with our mission and with our goals or is that going to take us in a different direction and we're going to expend a lot of energy on it when it's not you know moving us towards the things that we really need to get accomplished every year yeah. so following that plan is I mean I'm still using the original plan all these years later so it really does stand the test of time so yeah you can read the post and then there's a link there and you can click it and ask for permission to get the template and then i'll send it to you so awesome. it's just on a google thing so excellent great question and thank you so much because then there's a there's a, a gift for all of us so thank you and thank you angela for sharing that so the next question is from j r h lawless uh, mark why have you not written about east coast spookiness halifax and st john's have tons of eerie history you're right, and I own several of them signed by Steve Vernon. He is a brilliant writer. I love him to death. So maybe one day I'll co-write okay. something with him, but those are his stomping grounds, and I don't want, I want to do it very in a very you know Canadian-friendly way. But Steve's brilliant, uh, amazing storyteller, and he's got that covered. But you never know. Thanks for asking. Uh, that sounds like a cool road trip, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're I writing think retreat. <gasps> we'll find a haunted place. Right? Yes. Sounds perfect. I, I'm going to write that down. Haunted. There might be beer involved. <laughs> Halifax yeah. has some great spots. There really does need to be beer involved. <laughs> uh, that's a great segue. Mark's having a patio party at 7 o'clock. Yeah, I saw Online. that. Online. Be there. Virtual yeah. pool party. Bring your swimsuit. Virtual pool. I already have my lay ready. Anyways. Uh, a couple more questions. Is it, there anything you'd wish you'd known about the editing process while you were working on the first draft? Excellent question. And that was by Sabrina. Thanks, Sabrina. Can I jump in? Yes. This goes to uh, let the first draft suck. I, I wish I knew that it was okay. I thought it had to be polished more before I even showed it to another person. I didn't realize that the editor was your friend. The mm -hmm. editor is like a, a, a partner who wants to work with you, not to criticize you. So yeah. sometimes 
you can't edit something that's not written. And that's, yeah. mm -hmm. I yeah. wish I knew early. You, you can't edit something over. that's not written. Yes. You have to give yourself over to that creative process in that first draft. Like yeah. you can't, you got to get that internal editor and just like shove them in a room full of virtual clowns or something and just, you know, let it, you know, just let everything come out. I know some people like to edit on the first draft. So that's why I was a little hesitant to answer this question because everybody has a different process. And so you have to yeah. figure out what works for you. But for honestly, I think just, you know, yeah, keep those things separate. I would say tr practice, give it a try because I've tried to just like, I guess the vomit, the words, just let the words come out. And, and I, the anxiety I felt blocked creativity. So for me, that, that doesn't work. It might work next year, but it doesn't work right now. Um, Cause I've heard that before. And I'm like, that was one of the things I'm like, no, I want to really try this and, and, and give it the good, the good college try, but I, I can't do that yet. How about you, yeah. Susan? Well, I, I do, yeah, I write that way, just letting it out. And I don't think I had too much of a problem with that, actually, at the beginning. The, the one thing I might add to that is I think especially if you're starting out, it might be a mistake to show your work too early to other people because they can, they can say things that shut you down and it might become a, you know, a bit of a committee story that, you know, you, want, you need to get your vision out there first. And yeah. you know, write down on paper before you show it to other people, and then then you you can stand fast to what you really want, but take from them. So that would be just my little bit there. Mm -hmm. I would also add, and this is, and I I say this with caution. If you go to an editor panel with editors that you trust, and and take their advice with a grain of salt. Um, I learned so much from, I had an amazing editor with my first novella, like she, I learned so much from her, but I also embraced learning so much from her. So she gave me like simple stuff like, Sarah, how many L-Y words do you have? What are those ever? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, go through them. If there's more than two a page, take it out. Just take it out. Like figure a different way to say it. And so that's really simple, but she's like, it automatically ups your writing game, how it sounds and flows like those sorts of things and also find the words you reuse too much, mm -hmm. right? Like let it come out like in your first drafts. And then she's like, then have somebody read it and go like, why did you use that word five times? Like once? Great. Thanks, Tammy. Uh, we have 10 minutes guys. So that's one of the things. Oh, so you were supposed for to break. I was about to say <laughs> that. Uh, okay. Thank you both. Yes, thank you both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's all good. What I meant is in the first draft, I think you're wanting to get the story and get the characters out. Yes. I, I would think agree. maybe making that your your vision first before you work on, you know, other polishing things. I would what I would one hundred percent agree with that, Susan. And I also would also say don't be scared of ten drafts before you send yep. it to a, a a professional editor or beta reader yeah. or critique group. Like if it or twenty, like Dude, this is your work and your process. And if it takes you one, two, three, thirty, like yeah, it's don't your be in process. a rush. Yeah, yeah, just let it take as as long as it takes and honor that. Yeah, and find out yeah what you need at each stage, or or just let yourself explore what you need at each stage. So we have a few more questions. So I want to do any. I want to do some more stuff. Any advice for giving and taking constructive criticism? Great question. Oh, great question. Yeah. I would probably say to read it, read the, read the criticism and then go do something because you need to get the mad out. <laughs> you really like, honestly, you have to, you have to let go of the emotion to kind of really judge it by its value. And when you first read it, you're going to be full of, you know, what? I can't believe they said that. I totally said this, or I totally showed that well, or, you know, you're going to react. So just read it through and then go do something else. And when you feel like you're ready to come back, what I always do is I try to put myself in their shoes and I try to see that scene or whatever they've brought up through their eyes to see if I can understand how they got there and how they, you know, if they tell me that, you know, the uh, character's dialogue is really stilted or they feel like they're, they don't really understand what the character's feeling. I'll reread it like, okay, where, where is this coming out? And just, trying to really challenge myself to see it through their eyes. And often I will see, oh, okay, you know what? Right here, I really could have gone a little deeper. I could have done this, and that maybe would have made the difference. Um, but if I can't see from their point of view, then I'm like, okay, well, I think this is just a difference of opinion. 
And a lot of that is learning how to build your, your gut instinct as you go along, understanding good, strong writing and, and understanding that people's preferences and stuff like that are all going to come into play. Yeah. yeah that yeah, distance is important, I think, uh, Angela, uh, because we can't help but take it personally. But one, uh, one, I love looking at it from the reader's perspective. Well, what, what, did, what did I miss? Maybe I didn't describe that properly or I, I made assumptions. The other thing is I've actually been able to use criticism to improve stuff, especially on the indie published stuff where you can actually make changes. It's not locked and set in stone and, and they have to print another thousand copies. Uh, but the other thing that I think a key thing is to remember somebody took the time to comment on that. That's actually, um, it's a huge thing. When I worked at Kobo, we did a study and said a book with one single one star review was twice as likely to sell as a book with no reviews at all. Because cool. just because someone hated it, they took the time to rate it. It meant somebody read it. It meant somebody read it. And there's lots of stuff people hate that other people love, right? Mm -hmm. Pineapple on pizza is an example, right? People is very divisive, but some people love it. Some people Delicious. hate it. So, and remember, they're, they're, they're critiquing, and this is hard, they're critiquing the story, not you. Mm -hmm. So you can work yeah. together with that and maybe learn from it for your next story or maybe not. Maybe you don't need to change anything. Maybe they just, that's not their cup of tea. Yeah. So we ha we're winding down and, and there are some more questions, but this one is, I really want to get to this one be to make sure that we cover it. Um, somebody, Kelly asks, maybe at the end, each of you, could you tell us the one thing you would have done differently when you were starting out? Um, thanks, Brett. So Susan, can we start with you? Oh dear. That <laughs> That's that's a hard question. Is I can I I've, I've got something <laughs> planned like right like so I've been listening but also planning so I can jump in if you're not ready yet. Oh um, oh I see what would I have done? Um, to you. I don't know. I mean I almost wonder if I should have taken a, a university program perhaps that's a weird one but uh, at the time I started writing I'd done a lot of studying and I was really tired of it and so I I you know I just didn't want to do any more serious. Uh, university type work so I, I didn't uh, you know I just decided I would learn on my own but it was a lot of learning by the way and all that and I just wonder if maybe taking more writing programs near the beginning would have sped things up a little bit but I don't really know I guess it would depend on the person because I've heard feedback that it absolutely has and then from others they lost their writing their own writing voice from yeah. too much study mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. You know, I really don't know. Yeah. How about you, Mark? I I wish I had taken the time to celebrate the the accomplishments along the way, because this is something that you'll experience as a writer, and it happens to the New York Times bestsellers as well. You feel okay. My first book is out. My first story's been published. Whatever, it's been accepted for publication, or somebody bought it when I published it myself. You'll never feel that, oh, I've made it. <laughs> You'll always feel comparisonitis and someone's better than me and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So pause to celebrate those small wins. That small win might be your re writing group. Somebody, it, the story made them cry or laugh or whatever. It touched them. Bam, that's a huge, Yeah. that's why we tell stories. It's why we write. Don't forget to celebrate the small things along the way. Brilliant. How about you, Angela? I would say something very similar to Mark. Um, I know for me, I, I had a lot of self doubt about my skills and uh, you know, it can really, it can really suck out a lot of the joy out of the whole process of everything. And I mean, even, you know, I've, we decided to self publish. We self published a series of books. The books do really, really well. And I still feel like a total imposter and um, just yesterday I posted a picture like I always do every time I have a new book I post a picture of it on my bookshelf and the reason why I do that is not because I'm a narcissist or anything like that but because it's a challenge to myself and a reminder to everyone else to not let self-doubt and not feeling good enough get in your head because it took me 14 books before I started putting my books on the shelf and leaving them there 14 books Ooh, I put smokes. them in the cupboard. I would bring them out every once in a while and I would like take pictures because, you know, for marketing or whatever. And then they would go back in the cupboard. So like Mark, I didn't celebrate, you know, each 
milestone, each book, each success, I didn't. I had this like underlying feeling like I was this imposter. And it took me 14 freaking books before I was like, Angela, what are you doing? Like, you're an idiot. Stop doing this. So that picture of the bookshelf that I do, like that's now a symbol for me to awesome. just go to let go of that crap. Like, don't let that get in your head. Like, it takes a lot of courage to write. Doesn't matter what you write. It takes tons of courage and that should be celebrated. Absolutely. And Angela, I need you to look at the chat. Mark said, what Angela doesn't realize is that she is a virtual rock star, all caps, <laughs> of the book industry, admired by tens of thousands of writers. So just thank soak you. that in, guys. Oh my gosh. Yes, just, think, just soak that in. So I guess the one thing that I would tell myself, actually, is to, one, prioritize my writing. And two, give myself breaks. Right. So it's finding that balance. So don't be don't be so hard on yourself that if you don't write that day or, or that week or whatever, but also don't just don't let it just slide either. Right. So find the balance for you and cut yourself slack on both sides. Prioritize your writing if that's what you want to do, but also cut yourself some slack if life happens because life happens. So um, this is like we have one minute left and I just want to thank everybody. Like this was amazing. I absolutely adore all of you guys. I love being on panels with you guys. So thank you so much for sharing to all our attendees. Thank you so much. Have a kick butt when we're Great collide. questions guys. Yeah. 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 And I'm cool. sorry I didn't get to all of them. Uh, there was also a question about Mark's um, music video career and how awesome that is. Um, and I actually saw Jonas Saul on here too. Yay. Jonas is here. I can't wait to see your, um, your panels in the in during the weekend and yeah and i love seeing the pictures from greece you little stinker oh my anyway. gosh right? <laughs> i'm happy to know you peaked out at 100 people yeah right. Woo! i think awesome. that's the biggest we can get in here that is actually you're right that's the, it that's is the cap yeah that's the cap oh, it is. <gasps> that, no, that no feels it was like, like being in a conference room where there was no more seats yeah right. standing are, are you standing yes Ooh. Have you been, are you standing all weekend? Yes. I have more energy when I stand and I get, I have my Fitbit on, so I'm getting. That was, <laughs> well, that was one of the questions. How do you keep your energy up in Mark's stand? I That's answered good. that quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so I do have another, um, Mark's, yeah, your, your, your net, your networking event, the, the pool party or the yeah. pool patio party at seven o'clock. It's in the program. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to show up and my brother's coming to, um, he, off yeah. he has an office hours at four. You have, uh, yeah. Oh. In 10 minutes I have office hours on, Excellent. A, on a different bat channel. On a different bat channel. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Oh my God. You guys are so fun. So oh if, God. is there like one last question or one last thing somebody just has to get out? Somebody asked what your last name was. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. I should put it here. <laughs> sorry. Sarah Kane. Depends who she's writing under. Graham. Yeah, I write fiction under Sarah Kane's <clears throat> and nonfiction under Sarah Graham. I wrote there nonfiction with a homicide detective. And I almost brought him up like eight times because I would remind him of process when he's like, we got to do it this way. He's or why is this not working? Morning. I can't wait. Oh, yeah, he is. That's awesome. I can't wait. You guys are so fun. I'm hosting. <laughs> am I on Twitter? I am on Twitter, but WWC is the only time. Um, that Once that comes year? on. Sorry, I'm just looking. He doesn't there. use her social media. I like know. I'm I'm learning Instagram. I'm really mm. proud of myself. You need mm. the TikTok, Sarah. That's all there is to it. <laughs> I need TikTok. <laughs> I'm know. doing a scene setting. I have 19 seconds of video that I'm putting on the scene setting one tonight at six. Ooh, that's Ooh. exciting. Because it took me hours to get 19 seconds, so I'm like, forget that. The 19 seconds is perfect for TikTok. <laughs> It introduces this the scene setting thing, so the rest is just pictures that you they have to listen to me gab. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, so that's fun. Okay, well, thank um, you all for coming out. We had a wonderful panel. Yes, Woo! thank you guys you for guys. hosting us. Thank, thank so, you, Sarah, for leading us. It's yeah, thanks for coming, and I can't wait to pop on to Mark's office hours in eight minutes. Okay. That's yeah. where I'm going. Right, and, and your office hours are like chatting. It's just chatting ask the biz. me, uh, ask me anything about the writing, publishing, anything. Uh, I'll make up lies and all the usual things I do. <laughs> sounds good. That sounds fabulous. <laughs>
All right. Good stuff. All right. Okay. Guys. Well, mwah. see you guys later. Thank you. See you guys. Bye-bye.